If you've been keeping up with the gaming news lately, you understand that there have been some colossal flops in the gaming industry lately. And a lot of us are saying, see, if we all just decide that we don't want to play a certain type of game, whether it's bad mechanically, whether it's pushing a political message, whether it's doing all these kinds of things, it will teach the industry that's not what we as the customers want. However, a channel that I watch, Luke Stevens, uh, he actually had a conversation with some people that work in the industry, and this is what he had to say about that conversation so let's take a look at this and i want to comment on this a little bit because this is really interesting there's that i will also say i was speaking with a head honcho at a big gaming like marketing department recently and i asked this person like what their their thoughts were after concord after suicide squad like what are people at other companies talking about internally after seeing those colossal flops and it was really interesting because they they basically like paused and thought about it like it's something we think of and it's something we talk a lot about because we're all trying to see why those failed and avoid that right but but after a moment of thinking they said i think the biggest takeaway is that if you give gamers enough time to be upset about something they will find something to be upset about and so we need to do faster marketing cycles to eliminate that potential problem, which I thought was interesting. Basically the idea just being, if you can shadow drop a game, that will give your game way more chance of success. So there's that. All right, so that's interesting that people who are in the marketing for the gaming world are looking at this going, well, obviously one of the problems here is that we're just giving people too much time to be angry about something and not actually addressing the problem, not actually addressing the thing <clears throat> that people are angry about, the thing that's sparking the controversy, like overt politics and gaming, like bad writing, like bad game design, like releasing a game eight years too late for a market that already has games like that that doesn't need another game like it. Again, there are a lot of issues here, and I've even heard Luke talk about a lot of these, especially when it came to like Concord, even Luke was saying, he's like, yeah, he's like, where was the market for this thing? Like, who was this game for? It didn't, you know, but apparently people in the marketing departments are saying one of the things that they're going to focus on is probably having shorter marketing cycles to reduce the time that people have to be angry about stuff because that would lead to less sales. And that's the problem. It's not the fact that some of these games are coming out and they're just flawed in the development cycles. Now, and Luke's not saying that either. Let's be very clear here. Luke is not saying that either. He's saying the marketing people are focusing on this particular thing, which is people being angry, the amount of time they're being angry, and how that is hurting sales. Not really any of the other stuff. And they're talking about it specifically from the marketing aspect. I'm going to be honest with you. I think some of these colossal flops, I, I man, after hearing that, it really worries me that the gaming stuff is ever going to get any better. Now, there are a lot of people out there that are like, oh, don't be a doomer, don't be blackpilled and stuff like that. But it's really hard when you hear information like this to be like, man, is it going to get better? Is it going to get back to good storytelling? Are we going to get back to good game design? Are we going to get back to what games were originally uh, known for, which was taking us into an entertainment medium and having us uh, spend time in that entertainment medium being entertained? Or is it just that they're gonna continue doing the same things and they're just going to try to find ways to trick the market into purchasing what they're selling? I watched this the other day and it caught me because I was like, wow, because all of us are trying to say, look, if we just vote with our dollars and do it this way, this is the message that, we'll s that we're gonna send but I guess that that doesn't mean that the message that we're sending is going to be perceived the same way, right? They're perceiving it as, oh, gamers just get angry. That's what they'll do. And so the less time we have uh, uh, for gamers to get angry in the marketing cycle, that that's, that's going to help. That's what's going to help to avoid some of this colossal flops. I don't agree with the marketing individual that he spoke to in that regard. Um but I don't know if the overall market agrees with me. I don't know. I just am wondering if any of these games that are putting out, if any of these successes that we're seeing with 
um, some of the games that we've seen this year, you know, Power World, Hell Divers. I know Black Myth Wukong was really big. I know a lot of the single player experiences or, you know, Space Marines 2, Astro Bot recently. Are any of these games sending the message that this is what we want? Or are people just like, oh, no, we just, you know, as long as, as people aren't uh, don't have time to get angry about it, then they'll just buy the games. Like, are they receiving the message that we want to send, which is keep politics, keep, keep, keep. Uh, uh, real world politics out of it. If the game has politics in it, that's fine. Cause politics, you know, that's, that's political intrigue is a thing that stories do, right? But it's the politics of that fictional world, not the politics of the real world. Is the game design good? Does the game have an audience for people? Are they receiving those messages? Or is it just that they perceive everybody who doesn't buy their games as just angry gamers and raw and we don't want them and and that's just how we are we're just the big angry online people and and that's what's tanking their games not the fault of the developers and the writers so let me know what you guys think down below um i just thought this was really interesting especially when guys like luke out there get the chance to talk to some of these industry people and kind of go into some of these conversations that's something that a lot of us don't have insight to and this caught me off guard. I was like, wow, I, I don't think that they're getting it, guys. I don't think that they're understanding what a lot of people are looking for in the escapism side of gaming. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This is absolutely crazy uh, to hear. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. And if you guys uh, like what I had to say here or just, you know, just again, want to help me think through this, like, are we actually getting through or no? Or are they just that dense? Let me know what you guys think down below as always. And if you guys want to see more videos of me talking about some more stuff, here are some videos on the screen right now. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in to A Drink With Crazy. And until next time, cheers, everybody.